This is the Columbia Calling Podcast, episode 498, December 2023, and our very special guest. Well, we have two special guests. Uh, we have Diego Calderon, the famous pajarero or birder there in Medellin. Those of you in the birding world will no doubt know him because he is a celebrity uh, in this part of the world. And I think in all parts of the world. And I'm excited to say that we have Natalia Malaver back on the show, collaborating with us here in Bogota too. You'll remember that Natalia was on the episode and did the research for the episode on Mennonites in Colombia. Natalia is an environmental journalist. So to both of you, Diego and Natalia, welcome on the Colombia Calling podcast. Thank you Thanks very much. Time. Thanks very uh, much. It's great to be here. Finally meet you guys. Yeah, I, what is so exciting to me is, you know, looking up and I know the Birders show, I know that the, the stuff that you do, the podcast, the YouTube channel, the movies and so on, because I know Chris Bell, who is a, you know, a, a, a master birder. And of course, Greg Bleakney, who is the director of Where Nest and Where Next, the creator. Let's let's just start. Diego, how do you get involved in all of this? Yeah, actually, you know, it's been a, a privilege in this this stage of my birding life, of my ornithology life, of my biology life, actually, to get to meet these guys, you know, like probably six years ago, uh, I I got in touch with Greg and we started to work together on that beautiful project that you mentioned that is the birders. The birders was that campaign that Colombia was, you know, using to promote our country and, and the tourism in Colombia, especially using birds. We show, you know, how beautiful is birding in Colombia, how cool a road trip is. And we produce a documentary, one hour documentary and four or five shorter 15 minute documentaries, uh, uh, an original soundtrack. And we, you know, spread the word, help spread the word, you know. Uh, Pro Colombia has been doing it forever on a, on a very, you know, hard schedule, very, very sharp work. And we, we did The Birders. That is an amazing documentary. We filmed it with Greg's company, Where Next, that, you know, they are super talented. The, the, the team actually backstage, you know, behind the scene is pretty, pretty, pretty sharp, pretty, pretty exquisite, talented group of guys. And then, you know, that's how I, I, I got to meet Greg. And then later on, on the same, you know, office, the, the appearance of Chris Bell, as you call him, a master birder, uh, uh, came and with Chris we made all this crazy story of the birder show uh, and we've been having fun doing it you know excellent that's happy and, and Natalia well, before we got on the on the show you were saying to Diego that you are a birder yourself well I wouldn't call myself a birder I think that's a, a high level <laughs> uh, of a title I don't I don't think I can call myself that but I do love birding I do love birds and I love bird photography and I have been following Diego's work for quite a while, and I know that they are excellent in their work. And uh, I, what I love the most about the Birders show and the, all the work that they do is that they make it very fun. So mm -hmm. even if someone who's not really uh, involved in the nature uh, or bird watching uh, environment, uh, doesn't really know about this, they will definitely have fun watching the show because they make it so fun. It's a talk show, which mm -hmm. you never really <laughs> expect. We fake uh, it. A talk we show fake it. We birds. make it look fun, you know. <laughs> I know. Bro. I mean, I know there's a lot of work behind. I know there's a lot of work, but it's that that's what it means, that you do mm -hmm. such a wonderful job that it's, it looks really, really fun to watch. And it's not easy to accomplish that mm. in the nature spectrum of, of work. So I really give you um, like kudos for that. You know, <laughs> you do a wonderful oh. job. Oh, thanks. But it's it's always nice to be flattered there, uh, Diego. Now, <laughs> I, think, I think there's a lot of points here about birding because I would like to say, in the UK, where I'm from, as you can hear, has a huge uh, like birding uh, following of uh, birders, twitchers, whatever you want to call them. I know there's a difference. I know there's a difference, but uh, uh, a huge and with the RSPB and so on. But for a long time, there was a kind of a negative connotation around birding, not because of environmental things, just that the people were boring. But in recent years, well, the last 10, 15, 20 years, that has changed. And birding 
is an adventure sport now, especially when you're in Colombia. I mean, you're out there in the wilds, and you guys it's get just slowly, up. It's slowly changing. Yeah, it's slowly changing. You know, like you, as you were mentioning, even even the more hardcore side of birding. You know, Brits uh, mm -hmm. that have been, you know, like the epitome of you know like wearing camouflage clothing very silent going to watch a bird waiting 10 hours in silence in the rain you know the foggy foggy uk landscape etc burden has got to be more sexier you know like fun and more entertaining and one thing that a lot of people including us at the birder show and that's one of our main reasons we're trying to make birding more accessible and mm -hmm. more for everyone. And, you know, birders are not only people that have cameras and gear and binoculars and super specialized people that go to the field to find a rare bird. Birder is anyone that, you know, through the window enjoys listening to birds, singing. Yeah. That's that's already a birder. Yeah. And then Natalia, I mean, you are more than a birder just <laughs> for the fact that you enjoy, you know, like content, online content on birds and you go out and take photographs. And you are connected to nature yeah. through birds. So birding is probably, as as you say, Richard, changing a little bit and, and getting more into the into the hobbies list mm. of you know people all over the place, all over the world. Like birding is now fun. I, I want to just jump in. You say, you know, birding's coming a bit uh, more sexy. Do you think of yourself as a birder sex symbol? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all, but but we do our making birding sexier so if that makes us you know a little sexier to anyone in the planet that 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 could be a little compliment but that's 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 our job man making this thing more mm. chewable you know more for everyone I, I i like this a lot i like this a lot now last month i was back and forth between cartagena and uh panama and i was with nat geo and i had to i had the opportunity to go birding four times on the barro colorado in the in the canal uh, the the uh -huh. Smithsonian Institute and it was it was fantastic. I got to spot I got to spot and see some of the dance of a red cap mannequin, which I found Ooh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, the moon the moonwalking, the Michael Jackson dance, yeah, and stuff. And then I got to show it. I showed the the guests on the on the on the tour. I later I showed them the dance on YouTube. It's the craziest thing. And that's what again. I don't think of myself as a birder, but I am interested. You know, I appreciate all these things. And then when you see something so amazing like like this this bird, it's like this is phenomenal. This is something that I could get into. Although I'm not the greatest at getting up at 3 a.m. to go out and sit uh, amongst the mosquitoes. <laughs> well, you, you you have to make your you know your your votes when mm. when you when your birding game starts to escalate, you know, like at the beginning you you enjoy birds through the window, you go to your neighborhood park. You may take a little, you know, trip to a finca with friends on the weekend or a reserve. And, you know, but probably Natalia have been suffering, you know, living it. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, man, should I get 3 a.m. next Sunday to go to the little reserve above town to photograph something cool? And it became, I mean, it kind of, it kind of, yeah, became a, a, a little bit of a, of a religion, you know, and you start to think sweat, dream, leave birds all, all all the days of your life. And it becomes a passion, you know? And and one of the cool things about birds and about birding is that birds allow anyone to enjoy nature on their own level. So birds please everyone on their own needs, on their own game, you know? And, and that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool if you want to photograph them, if you want to research them, if you want to make art with them, music, yeah. whatever. Birds are there for us, you know? Yeah, Regarding that, I I heard you in a, an interview uh, where you where you said you didn't like. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I understood that you don't like the the term bird watching as much as birding because birding is also listening, uh, witnessing the whole environment and trying to connect uh, in a deeper level with birds. So to you, what is birding? Uh, it's in, it's not just bird watching, what as we imagine. So to you, what is truly birding? 
yeah, I mean, the, it, it, if you're going to get, you know, like very, very religious about terminology, you, you're going to get in trouble, you know, always with anything yeah. in life. But in, in general, the word birthing is probably, you know, a little bit rounder and bigger and, and more hugging, you know, it gets to enjoy birds on a lot of different contexts. And bird watching, I mean, the, the word itself is, you know, observe, watch, see birds. But 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 you can anyways enjoy them in, in, in a lot of different contexts. So birthing birthing is just another sense, you know, like another mm-hmm. way to connect with, with life. You have you you smell, you see, you touch, but you can also have the birth sense. And like right now we are having this conversation here. I'm I, I'm not paying attention, but by the birds I'm hearing in the back here in a little park that is next, you know, to Pilar's, my girlfriend's home in Medellin, I know that I am at certain elevation in the Andes of Colombia and that I'm not in the Chocó or in the Amazon. So so birding gives you this superpower, you know, this mm-hmm. extra extra sense, sensory layer to your to your life. And I guess birding brings all these components together and bird watching restricts them a little bit. But you know, bird watching is birding, birding is bird watching and, and it's all about enjoying birds. <laughs> I, you mentioned you mentioned the Choco in that, and I, it's a place that I absolutely love. Um, but only this year I've been on the Caribbean side, so around Capurgana and so on. I saw a couple of things, but you were recently you found the endemic species. Well, it was believed to only be in Panama, but you uh-huh. found it a 160 kilometers south in the Bajo Baldo Mountains of the Choco. Don't get me don't get me in trouble with Panamanians here, man. Because you know, <laughs> we 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 play this game. I mean, we these countries, you know, we are so close together, and of course, birds and nature they don't recognize political borders. You know, <laughs> no bird knows where Medellin starts and and Envigado ends. You know, that doesn't happen, and you know, we tend to use our borders to tell birds are endemic of Colombia, birds are endemic or exclusive to Antioquia, and things like that. So. Probably, probably like a year and a half, I went on a little expedition to the Mecana Peak. That's, you know, a cerro above Capurganá. Mm-hmm. One that I was drooling and all my friends had been drooling to explore. Uh, but, you know, situation, political situation was not the best in the Chocó mm-hmm. for a while. And it's still, you know, a little leafy. Uh, but we got a little security window and I went up with a couple of local people, local good friends from Capu- from uh, Bahia Solano. And what happened is, you know, what what happens when you explore uh, untouched, remote Colombian mountains? You you get surprises. And this was 160 kilometers south of the border of the Pirre Mountains in the border of Panama and Colombia. And we found the Pirre Chlorospingus. Pirre Chlorospingus is a tangara. It's, mm. a, it's a small, you know, blue-gray tanager, green uh, palm tanager type of bird, that same family that eats fruit with, you know, white eyes, very olivey body. And we found this bird to be the, one of the most common things in that mountain. And that wasn't known for science. You know, mm-hmm. it was, it was you know, used to believe to be a bird endemic to Panama, only living in the Panama mountains. But, you know, we all knew that it was just uh, lack of sampling, lack of research. So mm-hmm. that uh, we also found several birds endemic to the Pirre Massif that we actually share with, with Panama, but 100 kilometers, 160 kilometers north of where I was. So that's how how entertaining and, and surprising and exciting birding is in these countries you mm. you go to a little area that no one has explored and you could find new birds for science new birds for a country and and of course orchids mushrooms mammals everything you know it's just there waiting to be discovered you, and so. what is this little game amongst countries about uh, i've seen that between amongst countries you guys uh, compete uh, mm. to find endemic species from a country or believed to be endemic species no. from a country in a different one. And I, I've seen that you guys have found endemic species that were supposed to be only from Panama, but also mm-hmm. Peru and Ecuador, I think, yeah. have found species it's, that it's... we believe were endemic to us. So what is this little game about? It's <laughs> impossible It's impossible not to, to, to play the game because, you know, as we share so much habitat. We share, I mean, if you think on the biogeographical Chocó, we share it with Panama and uh, and Ecuador. If you think on the Amazonia, we share it with Peru, Brazil, Venezuela, Ecuador, and, and so on. You know, all the habitats are shared because, you know, nature doesn't recognize the political boundary. So 
it's it's impossible to not go to an area and still you know a few of the birds that were only uh, south of the border north north of the border and it's just a it's just a friendly game but of course you know people is is always proud that we have so many species of endemic birds we have so many orchids blah 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 so it's a little bit i would say irrelevant game but that keeps us busy and happy and 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 playing this you know friendly competition of who's the country that has the most birds in the world who's the country that has most endemics blah 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 but it's just again you know like referring to superlatives you know, the highest number of orchids, the highest number of mammals. But that, at the end of the day, it doesn't have any sense if we don't really have the means to keep those habitats, to conserve them, to research them, to make tourism, to, to bring tourism and, and make conservation and bring, you know, good good money to these communities, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually kind of a, that game is kind of an excuse, I would say, mm -hmm. to to just, you know, keep us alive and, and happy on the birding game we play, you know, on, on each of our countries. It's, Colombia's really good at that. We are the number one in this. We have the most this. <laughs> we have the most this. We are the happiest country, which I always find very interesting <laughs> indeed. And as you say, the superlatives and so on. But when you, when you get out there, uh, I mean, the quality of a birder for me is, is it must be patience. The quality. Absolutely. Is, you, Number you, one. You know, you have to sit there and, and watch. But do you, I mean, are you also a photographer? Do you take equipment out to photograph all of these special equipment? Because I'm sure that Natalia is interested in this as well. Yeah. 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 No, indeed. I, I, I mean, I try, I actually try not to get uh, overloaded with gear and with a lot of photographing stuff so i do mm. all like the record shot mm. the record photo that is just you know a shitty a shitty crappy picture to prove that the endemic bird that i stole from panama is there in that mountain you know so people believe me kind of thing um i do videos i i enjoy actually using my my telescope my spotting scope to do videos uh, but I'm not. I'm not a professional. I probably, mm. I've probably actually done more professional in brackets field sound recording of birds than mm. photography and videos, mm. because that's something that I, I feel that I can uh, collaborate more with the scientific community on a professional way. You know, going to remote areas like the Murrucucu Mountains in the north of the Western Andes in in Cordoba. And recording birds there, I'm finding that, you know, we, we added 22 new species to the Cordoba list on just one expedition. And of course, we could photograph a few and make videos, but we made sound recordings of all of them. So it's probably a, a, a much easier way to, to provide information. But I play with photography. I play with sounds. And it's, you know, it's fun these days with all the technology. It's, it's getting bananas, you know, people people recording and, and, and doing photography of birds and just documenting, you know, birds. Yeah. yeah. And talking about documenting birds, uh, how do the statistics are measured? Because now Colombia is considered to be uh, the country with the highest diversity of bird species. But how do you guys measure this? How do you make sure that uh, these are correctly measured and that the numbers uh -huh. are right? Well, there are, there are, there are, it's like a general context to start with, and it's like the church, you go and pray list that, that do the systematics of the birth of the world, and you kind of pray on this church and on that church, and depending on that, you have like 10,000 species of birds in the world, uh, or you have like 15,000 or 20,000. So it's very philosophical about the what, what a species is, you know? And in Colombia, it's... It's the same, you know, there are uh, 1950 something species in Colombia, but there is the, the other church, let's say, that will split everything in different species. And, you know, Colombia could end up with 2000 and something species easily, you know, from one day to another. So you have to kind of register in one of these churches and say where you are, you know, playing with, which, which of these sites you are playing with. And then there is something that is pretty cool that is the Birding and ornithology, I mean, not ornithology, but birding is being based on the system of honor. And is that everyone is believed that is reporting correct things, you know, and that's why you need sometimes evidence, you know, photographs and sound recordings 
And there is one or two cases, of course, of people misbehaving, you know, like saying they've seen all the birds of the country and all the birds, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in general, everyone knows who's lying, you know. So for for all this official game, there is always a statistics. There is nowadays eBird, for example, there is an online database where you upload your records and you upload your evidence and you are like supporting what you're saying. And you can easily compare, you know, departments, countries, anything, dates. Um, but it's it's fun because, you know, birding and bird watching has always been based on the system of honor. And mm. when you need to do something more biologically, you know, correct and rigorous, you need evidence. And that's why you capture birds. That's why you measure birds. And 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 you have records that are totally totally accepted with evidence so it's mm -hmm. it's itself probably itself judge you know mm -hmm. in this in the world of birding yeah i know you were in the winning team. sorry sorry that i'm that i'm eating something here but i'm diabetic and my sugar it's levels okay. are going down so i just need okay, a little sweet time for okay. snack anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um i know you were in the winning team in the global big day right so how was that experience? And could you talk to us? Could you explain to us what the Global Big Day is well, about? I, I, I was I was a Colombian playing Global Big Day, so I was part of the winning team. But the winning team, we were five thousand people burning. You know, it wasn't my team, but the team okay. of Colombia. Global Big Day is basically uh, people feel it as a competition, but it's not a competition. It's a it's a citizen science. It's a participative science experiment where you get people from all over the world one day in May going out birding, recording birds. And people send their checklist through this, you know, database I mentioned, eBird. And then you can compare, you know, like Peruvians were out and they saw 1,600 blah, blah, blah birds. Colombians were out that day and they saw 1,700 blah, blah, blah. Cubans were out and they saw 400. And what it makes is, you know, a comparative that is a little funny and sometimes a little stupid because... Because, of course, if Colombia has the highest diversity in birds of the world, we're always going to win this game. So some people is now even saying, let's 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 do a more fair way to measure it. Like how many of the Colombian birds did you record a day? What percentage of the Colombian birds did you record a day? That would be a more fair way to see it because it not talks only about the number of birds in the country. There is a number that we can change. You know, we have. We are number one, as Richard was saying, and we are number one, and that's going to happen. Probably mm -hmm. that's going to be the situation, you know, for the rest of the days uh, of Colombia, as Colombia is configured with so many habitats and blah, blah, blah. But it's probably more fair thinking, okay, from the total 1970-something birds of Colombia, how many, which percentage of those birds the Colombians were able to record mm -hmm. on the global big day, you know, how strong they were, how, how deep they went into the country to find those birds. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways to, to see this game, but it's been an amazing game. You know, the game is brought millions of records of birds. There is easily, you know, nowadays I, I'm not I'm not sure because I don't play Global Big Day anymore a few years ago, but there is easily 7,000 birders of Colombia going birding that day. Wow. So it's, a, it's quite an amazing, an amazing task, you know, to get everyone like spread all over the country. And it's just an excuse. To get yeah. to see where in Colombia you have to go to see well, the highest the record, number of birds. I think even if the rules are changed, we're still going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not because, you know, yeah, because you have small countries, islands. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. if they only have 200 species of birds, but those 200 species of birds are easily mm -hmm. gettable, mm -hmm. you can get just a few birders recording a higher percentage of their national avifauna than Colombia. That's when the game would get interesting. Otherwise, it's getting a little boring, to be honest. Yeah, I, I we are always going to win. So, D Diego, I have a question for you here because obviously I, I am very involved in the politics of the country. But you know, birding gets you out into some of the more crazy areas of Colombia, as you say. You were in the in Cordoba there, which I know. You know, Cordoba is pretty interesting, and and then. You know, I'm sure you've been up to the National Park Los Catillos and things like that. Have you got yourself into trouble uh, being in these places? Well, indeed, indeed, you know, <laughs> like I, this was almost. Oh. 
and doing research in the Perihama Mountains, we got kidnapped by guerrilla. And, you know, we were uh, a couple of friends with a local guy, you know, doing research. Uh, but th those were the crazy days, you know, you had to ask guerrillas for permission. You had to ask paramilitary groups for permission to go and do to to go and do expeditions to to do field work. Uh, it's something that we don't do nowadays with tourism. You know, we only do birding tourism where it's absolutely safe to go. No, no, no question. Some of us have gotten in trouble in the past, but never actually with. That's something that everyone is doing very carefully in Colombia, but. It's undeniable that being a, a Colombian biologist back in the 90s, in the 80s, in the 2000s, you were really, really uh, likely to get in trouble if you were just, you know, hiking these Colombian mountains and jungles to get to see birds, to understand fauna and flora. So we were, yeah, we were kidnapped by, by you know, three months, 88 days. But it was one of the most amazing places you could you could hope to to be kidnapped. You know, we weren't. We weren't on a on a urban, you know, environment. We were in a really beautiful place. So we probably try to make the most out of a tough situation. So yeah, was, I, I read. Was, oh yeah, go you, on. Sorry. Go During on. That time, uh, you me they took your uh, book with notes. The notes that you were taking during your trip. Uh, you. Were... At that time in the university, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to take your notes in a little bit more about that. How was your birding experience while kidnapped, which is a, a very ironic uh, and I don't know, special situation if you could call yeah, it. Yeah, like that. birds are free and we were free <laughs> those days. Exactly. Well, actually, one of the things, and you as a, as a you know, scientist, journalist, uh, or environmental journalist, you know, that having your field notebook is key to you, you know. We as biologists are trained to keep notes on everything on our trips. And when we were working up, these guys took our field notes and, and they weren't, you know, happy with us. They said we were writing in code. And of course, we were writing in code. We were writing in Latin, you know, Latin names for everything. Uh, so they were they were not happy with us taking notes and, and doing the, the biological thing, the, the scientific thing. So eventually... I, you know, they, they, these guys gave us cigarettes, cigarette boxes. And, you know, I never, I never, I never smoked, but probably I smoked like, I don't know, four or five cigarettes there to pass the time and learn how to make circles, you know, with your smoke and things like that. Um, we took the papers of the, of the internal part of the cigarette box and I collect them because they were, they were uh, metallic on one side, totally useless, but they were white on the other side. So I had paper, you know. So I, I, I used to collect them and keep them secretly. And I used to take my notes to do my notes every night uh, in secret in my tent, totally, you know, this, hiding from these guys. And I was writing my birds. I was writing how many condors I saw and the nests of this hummingbird and describing birds and mm, trying to make, you know, to keep record of, you know, what I was trained for, you know, as a biologist, I was trained for, you know, to 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 take notes and and document, in this case, the birds of the Periha Mountains where we were kidnapped, and we weren't allowed to do it. So I did it on this secret little piece of paper, and I you know rolled them in, in, into plastic little waterproof you know of my backpack. You know, like in the very interior of my backpack frame. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, if you know, if one day I'm released of this kidnapping, and probably my backpack is the only thing that is gonna go out with me because they took the binoculars, of course, and the field notebook and everything. So eventually, yeah, I was released and my notes came and and we showed them. We showed them in the Birders documentary, actually, at the end. Um, and I think they have a very powerful philosophical role on telling how, you know, a biologist needs to record, document nature. And in this crazy situation, I was... I was anyways doing it, you know, even, I, I mean, I wasn't risking my life to do it, but I was not obeying the orders of not taking notes in code in Latin mm -hmm. names. So it was a beautiful part. It was a beautiful part of it. And, and, and I enjoyed it a lot. There is a short, actually, documentary. If you go to YouTube and you search for bird watching with FARC, you will see an Aggie or short documentary on, on my kidnapping. 
And, you know, I'm not going to spoil it, but the best beautiful things that had happened after we signed a PSD with Guerrillas. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the trauma, obviously, of being kidnapped is one thing, but I would think you kept yourself sane, bird watching, because I think you need to busy yourself with activities. Indeed, indeed, indeed birth saved our life during kidnapping, my life during kidnapping, you know, we had something to do. We had, you know, another reason to keep curious and to to make the long days pass short quick so yeah. absolutely birding saved my life while i was kidnapped oh i mean what an incredible story and i actually had not researched that at all thank you natalia for that but uh if we go back to the the sort of birding central thing of birding do you plan like your year ahead do you set goals as a birder for each year this year i need to do this this year i need to go here not really, not myself. A lot of people do it, but I never. Actually, the few times I've done trips to amazing parts of the world uh, that as a naturalist, you know, as a, as a birder, everyone is drooling to, you know, like the Galapagos or Madagascar or climbing up Mount Roraima in the Tepuis. I've never planned that as, I need to do that before I die. So, you know, 2025th or 2022 is going to be the year. I do it. They, I, I'm always, I'm always like dreaming with birds, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm always dreaming, going places, and and the time I have the opportunity to do it, commercially with my birding tours or with friends or you know just just by chance, like hey, do you want to join us to this expedition? Mm -hmm. um, I'm all game, but I never plan actually. I think probably people plan more when birds are just a just just a section, just a part of their lives, you mm -hmm. know. But birds are my life, like mm. every every second, you know, when when I'm not working, I'm birding by with friends or with my girlfriend, just just by pure, you know, fun of it, just enjoying it. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's that's an interesting question because I never plan. Of course, I work with birds and I sell birding tours. So, of course, I have to plan some of these things. But, you know, I, I if I don't go, I don't know, to Papua New Guinea next year, and if I go on 2030, I'm going to be as happy, you know. Yeah, very good. Very good. Uh, I, and also, I, I've got to, you know, I've got to ask out there, uh, you know, the, you, first and foremost, you don't look like a CIA spy or a, a you know, you don't look like a spy. The, but the FARC obviously got you for being in their region. But that's, that's why I'm a good spy, because I don't look like why, you know you could be a great spy of course. because you don't look like one. <laughs> exactly exactly so but let's <laughs> let, let you know a lot of the stuff that you put online obviously you're in Medellin right now and you've got access to places in the uh coffee zone which is spectacular uh, and I think mm -hmm. so much is on show for you there so what would you recommend to visitors to Colombia if they want to see a variety of birds where where should they go well well, it's a little, it's a little, sometimes you could be overwhelmed with, you know, the amount of places and birds and, and fun that you can have in a country like Colombia. But if you're planning on only one visit to Colombia, and let's say you have mountains, and our mountains, you know, are the Andes mainly. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can do a little crisscross the central land in Bogota, that is the east and this, but or Cali or so many. Cali, Manizales, Pereira, and Medellin is a great, great area to watch birds, to have the chance to see some mammals, some amazing landscape, the coffee culture of Colombia. And if you, you know, if you have an, an extra week to spare, uh, you're in trouble because you have to decide if you go to the North Caribbean lowlands and the Santa Marta Mountains, that is one of the most, you know, unique endemic places of the world, or if you want to visit... Amazon. 
Lowlands actually with with yeah and then soil so around you, Colombia, I love it. And dark slopes, and that's you know, a place that everyone should visit. You know, there are plenty of best things. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna get to see like the bigger ones, necessarily you have to either go pretty this Congreso de Aviturismo. You know, those are the two main stages where most of the people is like visiting and giving nice conferences and talks. But there are some charming little you know town festivals like Apia. Uh, or or the festival of the Piedemonte Andino Costero in in Nariño, you know they do it either in Tumaco or or in 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 places in between Pasto and Tumaco. So uh, there is a lot, but you know I, I love the festival the Piedemonte Andino Costero. That's you know once per year. I think it's October, and again you know they do it in between. And and those places that again the Chocó I cannot deny that is my favorite birding area in Colombia. Uh, but you could you could actually choose any weekend and then go and check for for events birding events and you're gonna have one place to attend in Colombia. It's getting crazy. It's getting mm -hmm. a little bananas actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want there, there's something I, I really really am interesting in and is uh, you are you have done some expeditions with uh, some of the people who kidnapped you who are part of the far guerrillas uh -huh. um i think it's the beer uh, going back the bird to do birding with the beautiful message of reconciliation uh but i i want to hear from you uh, what does this experience well, mean? Well, you're, you're, you're spoiling the people that I tend to watch the <laughs> documentary, you know, the, show, the documentary. But, uh, but it's, been, yeah. it's been fun, you know. It's been, it's been actually a way in which I can, you know, uh, contribute something to Colombia. I, you know, when, 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 all this, when all this peace process thing started back in 2016, I was feeling very itchy, very, very curious about like, okay, what, what can I myself as a, just a normal person? I'm not a political figure. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm actually quite a bad citizen. I, I don't take part in politics, etc. Uh, but what can I do? What do I have in my hands to to contribute to this new process of a of a new, you know, better Colombia? And then I found that you know my experience of being kidnapped. And the fact that I had the, the privilege, as you mentioned, of participating in like a research expedition with ex-combatants, uh, actually not the very same guys that kidnapped me because the expedition was in Antioquia and I was kidnapped in, in Cesar in the Periha Mountains. Uh, but that was, that was absolutely powerful because we went to the field with these guys and just made this beautiful experiment, cultural and social experiment of discovering birds and new orchids for science and new insects, new mammal new lizard, new ponds. It was crazy, you know, the amount of diversity we found. But it was just an excuse to make this beautiful cultural experiment of showing Colombians that there is a different way to do things. That, mm -hmm. you know, a guy that was kidnapped by this same guerrilla group could go with them and do research and learn from them and teach them some stuff. That a guy like a local young campesino, local young peasant that was a victim, his family was a victim of these very same guerrilla guys, could just, you know, leave behind stuff and go and be uh, uh, and be lighter of emotional baggage and work together and build together and, and get a new Colombia running together. So it was just it, it was just a beautiful way to get part of Colombia uncomfortable because we could show them that this was possible. Mm -hmm. And that's all basically what I look for and what I do on a very respectful and, and as I said, loving way getting people uncomfortable with my talk, with my presentation, bird watching with FARC, with the documentary, and with all these expeditions and, and possibilities that I have to go to the field, if you 
watch the documentary that Natalie's trying to spoil, you're going to see that I eventually went to the field with the very same chaps that kidnapped me, that, like the very same ones. But I'm not talking anymore because you have to watch the documentary. So it's, it's that. It's trying to get people uncomfortable in Colombia because there is more than one way to see things. It's not only black and white. We've been killing each other. We've been hating each other for, you know, 60 years. And there's ways to see the, the, the Colombian situation on different angles. And that's that's basically what I try to do from, again, you know, from the middle. I'm not taking part in politics. I'm not saying this is right wing, this is left wing, this is yes or no to the peace deal. This is this is just a normal person, you know. I'm just a, 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 a another guy from the, from the city that, you know, has experience with them and and i was kidnapped by them and now i can go burden with them and i yeah definitely I... how do you think the burden culture has changed since the peace agreement well not not only because of the peace agreement but i think in the last years more you know for everyone a little bit more democratic let's say uh, but the fact that we can now access areas that were out of limits in the country is and our possibilities to go and see a rare bird. The fact that the can you that bird and that can have that bird in feeders or or conserve the forest where the bird lives and earn some money out of it. So it's becoming part of the, you know, having a better quality of life for these guys and, and better opportunity for changing for good in Colombia in so many reasons. But I think that the fact that we signed the peace deal and some of these guys are already local tourism guides and they are interested in earning their life and their income on a on a better way and that way includes birds and nature and tourism is just you know lovely it's touchy i think i think it's it's an amazing opportunity for reconciliation in the country uh and it's always been my consideration that pro colombia should just use birds as the country uh branding just just birds you know it's such a nice easy non-controversial and and just very if it evokes positive uh, a positive nature so i i that's my feeling about that uh, but uh i think we should bring this to a close now uh diego and natalia have you got any last questions or any last comments i think everyone should go watch the, not only the documentary you were talking about with Nat Geo, but also the Birders documentary, which is, I think, available in YouTube, yep, right? YouTube, because uh, which is such a beautiful it's, documentary. It's free, it's for everyone. And, and you know, it's it's part of Bay in Colombia, and, you know, we, we mix music, indigenous cultures, birds. And as you, Richard, said, man, like, if pro, I mean, when Pro Colombia have used birds to promote the country, it's been a huge success but you know we birders and bird loving people probably have to give the honor to all the other beautiful things that we have in colombia to promote the country so you know let's let's leave a little window there made for you know coffee and and landscape and rivers and stuff but yeah birds 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 get us together you know birds connect people and and that's undeniable and you know thank you very much guys for having me here happy to happy to to respond to any questions in the comments when you publish uh, the episode and on social media for everyone that, you know, anyone that has questions or, or anything to talk about birds. Yeah. Go watch the Birders show, right? How do, can we find you in Instagram? Yeah. And YouTube? Actually, our, our, yeah, it's all the same. It's very easy. The Birders show in plural, the Birders show, it show de los pajareros. We're the same on every social media channel. Uh, even TikTok. I never thought I was gonna be TikToking, but there you are. You know, showing birds in TikTok is a is a is homework. You know, it's a task. And we are in YouTube, our main channel, the Birder Show. Go watch, subscribe if you like what you see there. Support us. We have you know a, a digital web store, and we sell some cool merchandise. We have a Patreon. We're trying just to make 
birding more accessible, more democratic, and funner and sexier. So it's not <laughs> it's a not too shabby objective indeed. <laughs> well, it's I think it's been phenomenal. Let me say well first and foremost thank you, Natalia uh, Malaver, environmental journalist, for setting up this uh, conversation interview with Diego Calderon Franco. Uh, and thank you so much for all the research done. And well, it, it needs no saying. Thank you, Diego Calderon, so much for all of your, well, unselfish knowledge, sharing it with us. And of course, the stories from the field, uh, being kidnapped, but birding as reconciliation. I like the idea of uh, the title of this uh, podcast being Bird Watching for Peace or something like that. I'll come up with something catchy. Uh, but uh, I think it's been it's been really How's it fun. Going? <laughs> That's a good one. I think it's been really Thank fun. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure. No, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to have both of you here. Uh, this has been episode 498 of the Columbia Calling podcast. It's December 2023. This is the penultimate episode of the year. We'll be back next week with uh, Sergio Guzman talking about uh, political issues in Colombia to end the year. And then we'll be back in mid-December with episode 500 of the Columbia Calling podcast. Thank you to everyone who supports us on patreon.com forward slash Columbia Calling. And of course, you can follow and subscribe and everything else on all the necessary social media ills. So thank you, everyone. And well, that's a goodbye. <laughs>